Mr. Beast is a massive YouTube star who makes millions of dollars on every single video. And despite how it might look, this was not an accident. And if you understand how Mr. Beast became Mr. Beast, you can actually get a lot better at improving yourself whatever you want to try to improve. So that's what I wanna do in this video today, is break down how Mr. Beast was successful and how you can replicate it. If you don't know who Mr. Beast is, he's a YouTube creator, so you should probably know about him because he's a huge YouTube creator. Across the various channels that he creates content for, he's responsible for 33 billion views, and he reportedly made $54 million in 2021 alone. He gives away a lot of that money in competitions during YouTube videos to then generate more views. Now, before you say, what could a YouTube creator have to do with me or me getting better? I'm not interested in YouTube. I'm not trying to be an influencer. You need to stop for a second and kind of unpack the story of how Mr. Beast became Mr. Beast because there's some really important lessons in there. The way he explained it several years ago when he was just getting started, he kind of found himself with this group of a few friends. Most of them were dropouts. Two were college dropouts, one was a high school dropout, and one was just kind of a corporate dropout. You know, he had a job and decided he wanted to walk away. And they all together, collectively, decided that they wanted to get really, really good at YouTube. So they spent the next 1,000 days getting together and basically deconstructing how YouTube worked. What was the algorithm favoring? What did people like to click on? How could you get your videos spread faster? They tried everything under the sun. They would go so far as getting on a Zoom call and spending an entire day breaking down whether or not the font size you chose in the thumbnail would change how many views you got. Now that's some serious specificity. And so over those thousand days, they just kept getting better and better. And voila, Mr. Beast became Mr. Beast after all of that practice. So if we take that story and try to break it down, I think there's three really basic lessons that anybody could apply to getting better in your life. Whatever you wanna do, you don't need to be an influencer, you don't need to be a creator, but the question is, what do you wanna get better at? And how can you get better at it? Well, this is the formula, at least if you wanna do it the Mr. B style. The first thing you need to do is be incredibly specific about the goal you are trying to achieve. Remember in Mr. Beast's little group, they would spend a day just trying to break down the font size and how it impacted how many views you got on YouTube. That's kind of how specific you wanna be. You can't be general because being general just means you don't get anything done. You wanna be very specific about the goal you are trying to achieve. Most people have probably heard of SMART goals, which is an acronym, which stands for specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. If you use that acronym to figure out what you're trying to achieve, it's gonna be much more likely that you actually hit your goal. So don't set a goal of being a better presenter. Set a goal of over the next six months, you want to improve your ability to interact with the audience and engage them during your presentations. And so in order to do this, every time you give a presentation at work, you're gonna ask a few people in the crowd to judge you in your ability to do just that, engage with the audience. So that way you're getting data points that you can improve upon over the six months. Now, that's a very specific goal, and that's the kind of goal that you have to go after. Don't simply say you wanna get promoted, Go to your boss and ask them, what are the things that I'm lacking in in order to get promoted? And then break each one of those down into a specific goal that you're gonna to try to achieve over the next month, three months, six months, depending on how big that shortfall is. I got the opportunity several years ago to listen to NASA astronaut Jose Hernandez talk, and he gave an amazing description of how he became a NASA astronaut because he actually applied several times. And every single time he would apply, he wouldn't get it, and he would look at the list of the people who did become an astronaut. And he would say, okay, what do they have that I don't? And he would say, oh, well, they all have a pilot's license. So then over the next year, he spent his time getting his pilot's license. He applied again and didn't get in again, looked at the list and said, oh, well, 
a lot of those people are dive certified. So he then spent the next year becoming a certified diver. You know, so he broke it down. He didn't just say, I want to become an astronaut and kind of just leave it there and try a bunch of different things. Every time he made an attempt, he would look at why he didn't achieve it, pick just one thing that he wanted to change, and then spend the next year trying to change it. If you want to improve, getting specific in what you are trying to achieve is the first step in that process. The next lesson we can take away from Mr. Beast is that you need to have a cohort. You need to have a group of people. You can't just do it on your own. We are social creatures that are designed to learn and exist together, and it's a great way to really move forward. When Mr. Beast was explaining this, one of the great things that he talked about is how when you're learning, you're gonna make mistakes. Everyone is gonna make mistakes. And then ideally, you learn from those mistakes. So if you as one individual are you know, making a mistake a week and you're learning from that mistake, just imagine if you had four or five other people who were also learning and also making mistakes. As long as you're learning from their mistakes, then you can just accelerate so much faster. If you bring together a group of people who are all determined to learn together, not just be together or compete, but actually willing to share information, share the things that they're getting wrong so that you can all move forward together, it's a great way to really accelerate the pace at which you can learn. And it's important to remember that, you know, we live in a world today that has a lot of on-demand learning. You know, YouTube does this, LinkedIn learning. There's lots of opportunities for you to go at things at your own pace. And so it can seem like, well, that's going to make it hard to have a cohort. But no, you can just as easily get a bunch of people together to take a course together, like we used to do with book clubs, right? You know, book clubs, you pick a book, you bring everybody together, you read a chapter at a time. You could do the same thing with an online course, whether it's a series of YouTube videos, whether it's a LinkedIn course, whether it's a certification from your local university. If you get a bunch of you together so that you can, you know, push ideas off one another and hold each other accountable, it's really, really going to help. Another important part of your cohort isn't just gonna be you know, people who are learning with you, but they're gonna be your supporters. If you work inside an organization, I highly recommend you engage with your manager and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to learn, and these are the steps that I'm taking in order to do it. Could you hold me accountable? Could you give me tips? Could you, you know, ask me questions about it? It's a really great way to include more people so that it's more likely that you will succeed in what you are trying to achieve. And the final obvious lesson that we can take away from the experience of Mr. Beast is the importance of practice. Practice, practice. Remember, he said they were doing this for 1,000 days. That's three years. Learning in the brain, whenever you're trying to do something different, it all comes down to connections between neurons and myelination of individual neurons. Myelination is a substance that builds up around neurons when they fire again and again, and it makes it easier for them to fire in the future. Your brain is inherently lazy. It doesn't like to have new thoughts. It doesn't like to do new things because it takes additional energy. And so the only way to make it easy to do anything is to do it again and again and again. That repetition will eventually build up the myelin on those neurons that you're using to perform that action, and then eventually it becomes easier. As the energy requirement to perform that action comes down, it becomes a lot simpler for your brain to say, okay, that's, that's the way we're going. I mean, I really like to think about this using the analogy of wagons going down a road and thinking of your brain, the, these patterns in your brain as, as ruts in the road. You know, if you have a heavily traveled road with really deep ruts in it, the wheels kind of fall into those ruts and the driver doesn't even have to pay attention. They can, you know, they can just kind of fall asleep and the wagon will wind up at its destination. And that's what's happening in all of your normal actions, the things that you're used to. But if you're trying to do something new, you're really trying to get that wagon out of the ruts and chart a new course, go on a new path. There's no ruts there. And so you have to pay very close attention to go down that road. And as long as you're having to pay close attention, it's really taxing on your brain and you're not gonna wanna do it. But the more you travel down that road, the deeper the ruts can get. And eventually that new path will become just as easy as the old path. And that is what you're trying to do. 
So if you take these three things that we learned from how Mr. Beast was successful, first you want to be extremely specific about the goal you are trying to achieve. Then you need to get a cohort of people who have the same goal so you can all try to get it done together. And finally, once you have that group together, practice, practice, practice. The faster you can drive these repetitions, the faster you are going to improve your performance. So we might not all be as successful as Mr. Beast, right? Something like that, you know, the major performances of the world, the Mr. Beast, the, the Michael Phelpses, th there's something special there. But it doesn't mean that we can't learn lessons from them in order to improve ourselves and dramatically upskill ourselves. So the, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, watch the next video. I hope to see you again soon.